Hey, I am Stacy, the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy. I'm just going to give it a sec, make sure I'm live and popping up here, and then we can go ahead and get started. So if you're just jumping on, just say hey where you're watching from. Um, Dixie Bell will be live with us tonight too, and I am thinking I may not be live here. So again, oh, here we go. So I've got it up, it's working now. All right, so tonight, again, I'm Stacy, the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy. I'm an elite Dixie Bell retailer in Ardmore, Alabama at the Rustic Willow, and then I have my location here in Madison as well. Hey, Elizabeth, hey, Nancy. All right, so um, tonight we are gonna be working on this dresser. Um, Dixie Bell will be on with us as well and they'll be able to help answer any questions. And um, if I do miss any comments or anything like that, definitely um, I'll go back after the live and answer any questions or just say, hey, oh, hey, nature, how are you? I know I catch you sometimes too. <laughs> um, so what we've got going, oh, and I'm sorry, I always forget the description part. Uh, I've got my link. I couldn't tag my page again tonight. I'm having some issues with Facebook, but I do have my link. Um, so that you can see final pictures of stuff that we paint on here. Um, and also just like and follow me on Facebook. Um, definitely share this video if you know anybody who could use some of these steps in here. Um, also have my affiliate link listed so you can find your local retailer. And if you are a local retailer popping on, just say, hey, um, post your store where you're located at so people can find you as well. Hey, Wanda, I always miss you whenever I'm live. It's good to see you. So anyway, um, hopefully if I forgot anything uh, in the description, I've got all the colors as well as the decoupage paper that we're using um, in case you missed that part. Uh, so hopefully if I forgot anything, I'll come back and mention it. I'm terrible at, uh, I'm terrible at remembering what I need to talk about. Once I get started working, then I'm all set. But <laughs> so tonight we're actually going to start off doing decoupage. Um, and the reason being is because I want to take you guys hopefully through an aging process that I'm doing with the paint here um, instead of using like a glaze or a wax. Uh, and I just need it to be set up a little bit. So we're going to start off with decoupage. We'll come over here, just show you how to do this coat. This is only one coat um, that I've covered this with. So we'll paint a few things and then we'll come back and go through the aging on it. Uh, so we are going to start off by using colorful tiles and this is actually a little outside of my comfort zone. I'm more like romantic blendy kind of thing, but, um, kind of trying to step out of my box here. I will go back to that next week though. We're going to be working on a hope chest. So I'm going to go ahead and take these drawers out and I'm going to drop you down. Um, so you can see close up kind of what we're doing here. And then, so to apply the decoupage paper, let me go ahead and drop you down. We're going to be using flat clear coat. Um, and I keep mine in a FIFO bottle, but uh, you can use satin, you can use gator hide, you can use the gloss. Um, any of those will work fine for the decoupage. So let me just pop you down. That way you have a good view. Hopefully you guys are far from the storm. I'm working outside tonight and I'm a little worried <laughs> because it's coming, you know, we're inland a long way, so it's not a big issue, but we're getting storms from Ida. And um, I'm hoping before it starts thunderstorming, I'm done with the live and out of the garage. <laughs> All right, so. The way that the decoupage paper works, you can have repeating patterns, um, or you have repeating patterns. So like, for example, with this piece, I didn't have anything long enough to fit all the way across. So um, I'm able to go ahead and just repeat the same pattern here and add another little extra piece. Um, so you don't have to cut um, your pieces to fit, but I like to do that. Um, you can actually just put your clear coat on and let me grab a brush right quick. You can actually just put your clear coat on 
And then once it dries, you can actually sand it off. But I prefer to cut mine down to size first. Um, I have sanded before when I've been kind of in a hurry and didn't feel like cutting ahead of time. But I just, I feel like I have more control whenever I cut them ahead of time. So I've just got a little bit of the clear coat in here. And I'm just going to go ahead. So I do the whole thing at once. Um, you can just put your clear coat on this side. You can lay your rice paper down and then add clear coat as you go. Sorry, I had a little grass that got on there and then add your clear coat as you go. But like I said, I like to do mine all at once. So I just added my flat pretty generously. And then I'm gonna come over and I'm just gonna place this edge of my paper because I'm not gonna be able to move it around too much once I start sticking it down. So I just wanna make sure I've got it lined up so now there are ways that you can be a little bit more precise with this. Um, I'm not concerned about having, I'm doing an aged look. So I'm not concerned if I have a few wrinkles in here or not, but this one's go actually going on pretty easy. So I just laid this side down here and then I'm gonna use my hand and kind of flatten it out. I do have some wrinkles coming in, but again, I don't care. I'm not worried about that. I didn't put it on really, really thick at the end, so I'm just gonna lift this up, put a little bit on here so I can get that edge stuck down. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that I've got good adhesion. All right, so now you can let this dry and go back over it a second time, but I just do it all at once. Um, and I use my brush. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on my brush because I do use that to help flatten it out. Um, just want to make sure that everything is adhered well. I do prefer to do this with gator hide. I find that it's just a little bit stickier, but we're out of gator hide right now. Hopefully it'll be in soon. Um, so I am using just the clear coat, but it's a personal preference. Um, all right, so that's it for that section. I'm gonna go ahead and protect around the rest of the drawer because I'm going to use this clear coat, and this is why I wanted to do this step first in my aging process. Um, I want it to dry a little bit but I want it to be a little bit, um, a little bit tacky. So here, let me, I'm so sorry. I completely lost track of the comments. I get kind of caught up in what I'm doing and then let me just pull them up here. Oh, hey, Joyce. All right. So then let's go ahead and I'm gonna do my repeating pattern now. So I can kind of see where that's gonna stick on. I think I am a little short here when I come to the end and how I cut it. And that's one, I mean, that is one reason why it is kind of nice also uh, to use the sand method to cut it, just lay it out. But in this case, um, it'll be fine because when I go back to age it, I'm going to be covering up that edge anyway. I can paint that in. You can paint over the decoupage paper. So again, I'm just laying it, pushing it down, make sure I have a good connection, a good seal, get the air bubbles out. All right. And then I'm just going to come back over it again with the flat clear coat. And I'm gonna use my brush. I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on it just to help it stick and adhere again. And I don't care too much about the wrinkles because again, I am doing a uh, more of a rustic aged finish and I've got some dry brushing going on afterwards. Um, and those wrinkles are great for that uh, dry brush to catch on. All right, so I've got this done.
then let's just go ahead and switch over to the other drawer here. Oh, thank you, Karen. All right, so now on this one, I'm only going to do this box and this box. With this molding that's in the middle here, I think I'm gonna end up painting it, hand paint it like a, like a tile, one of the tiles. Um, so it'll kind of just be like a, a 3D tile. Um, yeah, Nature said she loves to use her, her Scarlet brush with the decoupaging. That is a perfect brush for it. Hey, Carrie. Right now, I am using, by the way, I forgot to even mention, right now I'm using the oval medium. Um, and that's really just so I can cover the most space here. All right, so I went ahead and cut out my tile squares that I wanted to put in here. And just to let you guys know what I did ahead of time too to prep this, I did clean it with white lightning. Um, I did a scuff sand as well. This really isn't a wood that is a bleeder, um, so I did not, and I'm aging it out, but so I didn't really need to do any, um, any boss or anything like that. It wasn't a super slick surface. I did the scuff sand, so uh, no slick stick or anything like that. Just cleaned it with white lightning and then rinse it off with water. Um, and actually, I have a video on this dresser. Uh, it's literally probably about a month or two ago. We actually stained the top live. Um, since then, I've actually sanded it down. And um, so it would give it a more distressed look. But I think I did it in walnut and weathered gray. Uh, so again, just making sure everything is out there bubbles, wrinkles, all that good stuff. I'm gonna protect the rest of the drawer so I can go through and age it. And we're gonna go ahead and protect the center section. And I'm just kind of scrubbing the protectant in because I am gonna be, um, when we age it out, I'm gonna be putting uh, some coffee bean here inside this molding, I want to be able to wipe back um, anything that I need to. So right now with this, I'm just making sure that I'm getting coverage. Let's go ahead and decoupage this other piece on here. Oh, thanks, Dixie Bow. All right. So I'm just going to put a little bit more on here. I was kind of running out. So and again, that is flat, clear coat if you're just joining. Um, so I'm just going to smooth this out, let it stick to that flat, clear coat. This rice decoupage paper is so easy to work with. Um, so easy to work with. And it goes right on with the clear coat. All right, so now that I've got that on, we're just gonna go ahead and again, just put the flat over it and I'm gonna use my brush in order to just make sure it has a good seal and attachment. Get any air bubbles out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, like I said, finish protecting the rest of the drawer um, so that, and the reason I want to protect the rest of the drawer, when I go back with this aging process, I'm going to be wiping back, um, paint. If I did not protect this first, when I tried to wipe it back, I wouldn't be able to. Um, it would sink right into that porous paint and that would be it. So now I'm going to go ahead and pop you guys up. We're actually going to, uh, Go ahead and protect the frame on the dresser so that when we come in to age it, uh, we'll be able to do that. So give me just a sec here. All right, so all 
I'm going to do is I'm still using the same flat. Ultimately, I will actually protect this in satin. Satin's my favorite. But um, I'm using this uh, kind of as a tool for aging. And it will give me an extra layer of added protection. Um, so it doesn't really matter that I'm using flat and I'm going to finally, and I may end up protecting this in flat. I don't know yet, but, um, I usually use satin. So I just want to get this on pretty quickly. Make sure I don't have any bubbles or any, or drips, um, And I won't do that bottom apron for right now. Let's just, we'll just get this part done. And like I said, the reason I'm doing this is instead of doing a glaze, I'm actually using paint. So I want this, my protectant, to still be a little tacky when I go back in to age it. Um, so that's why I'm, doing this here so let's go ahead and put these drawers back in you know and honestly i'm not just i'm not 100 percent sure i'm hoping that once i get this all together that i like it and it's not too much um but we will we will see If it is too much, then I can probably just age it out a little bit more. Um, I will, I may, I kind of have an idea in my mind where I may want to add some patina on here. I know the hardware I'm going to do like in an iron. Um, so we've got this all done. So let's go ahead and see. I'm just going to show you guys um, how to put this first coat on. And that's all it is, is one coat. So, um... I feel like you can probably see pretty well over here. So what I'm going to do is, and I kind of feel like maybe I need to, well, actually, you guys let me know. Can you see pretty well from here, or would you prefer to be closer in? Um, I'm going to start getting the paint out and everything, but I'll just watch for comments. I'm a little bit delayed, so... We're actually going to be using Bunker Hill Blue. So that's what's on the very bottom. Very little of that. Cobalt, which is a true blue. And then I also have um, Pure Ocean, the Gulf. And because with the decoupage paper, this is sandbar. Because with the decoupage paper, um, it's pretty thin and whatever color you use behind it, it's not that you can necessarily see that color, but it can lighten or darken your decoupage. Um, okay, perfect, thanks. So Lori said a little closer. Most everybody said it's okay, but um, let's see. I'll get you guys in a little bit closer. I should be able to. Okay, don't, don't pay attention to my mess here, though. Um, I do just want to say that because, again, I'm working in the garage. I've got too much going on inside. Um, hold on, let me move it back. There we go. How's that? Hopefully that's pretty close. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on here. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and get out my paint. So my Bunker Hill Blue, you might think that I can't paint a dresser with this. This is an old, um... Hey, Linda, this is an old paint, so it doesn't take a lot, though. I'm actually only going to get about this much out of the Bunker Hill Blue. It's pretty thick, but I'm okay with that. Um, then we're going to go for just a little bit of cobalt. And that's our true blue. Well... I only have a little bit of cobalt too. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then I've got the Gulf. Um, you know, I'm mixing my colors up as it is. So 
I'm just gonna use the same spoon and I'm gonna take another spoonful of the golf here. Just throw that in my plate. And then also we've got just a little bit of pure ocean and sandbar. So this is all equivalent. When I'm putting all these colors together, no more than a spoonful of each color. Um, and this is gonna go quite a long ways. I'm gonna go ahead and get my brushes down here. I usually just get a bunch out and then go with whatever, whatever works. Okay, so I also have my Mr. Bottle. And I think that's it for this step here. So I'm really just keeping my brushes wet for the most part, um, unless I see that my paint is pulling. But we're gonna go ahead and start off with the Bunker Hill Blue. That's the darkest. I'm just going along the bottom here. And again, it's pretty thick. I'm not using a whole ton of paint. And I just wanna make sure that I get into all the grooves along here. Make sure that I get good coverage since I'm only doing this one coat. I can come back and touch it up though. And really what I'm doing here is I'm kind of laying out my colors. Um, just everything. Oh, you can kind of see what I did there on the side. Now the sides, I will have to have a couple of coats on uh, because I'm not doing the decoupage over them. Uh, so that'll be a little bit different. And I'm not 100% sure. Again, I'm never 100% sure where I'm going with it. <laughs> but like I said, this is outside of my comfort zone. But sometimes I like to do, you know, pieces that I wouldn't necessarily normally do. So I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm using the same brush, just a little bit of the Bunker Hill Blue in. And I'm really gonna try to mix it in down here where some of my blues are a little bit darker. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put maybe a little pure ocean on here. Maybe kind of bring this in over from the side. And whenever I mix these, or whenever I'm blending these blues like this, I'm really getting just more than the four blues that I started off with. Um, I get lots of nice little mixed shades in between, and I'm going really light here with the gulf, because again, where I have my decoupage, I do not want, um, I'm just going in different directions too to really mix that paint up on my piece. And I'm working pretty quickly because I don't want this to dry. But I do have my Mr. Bottle just in case. And let's go in over here with a little pure ocean. Get that nice and blended up. So my drawers have a lip too. So you'll see if you pull this out, this part isn't being painted. I do go back and do that after, oh, so true, Dixie Bell, a little goes a long way. But I do go back and do that after um, I paint because I do want all of this, this background plus the drawers, I want this to blend together um, and look cohesive. So I'm coming back in again with a little bit of the golf because I'm working this middle section So my paint's a little bit dry there. I could spray it with a little bit of water, but I really just kind of want to keep, it's not dragging too much, so I'd rather add a little bit of paint to it. I want to get some of these, um, I want to pull some of these colors down here so it looks a little bit more uh, aged and layered and streaky. There we go, just kind of blend that all in. 
So I'm liking how this drawer is looking down here. This will all be covered with the decoupage paper. So I'm gonna come in up here and I'm actually gonna come in with a smaller brush. I'm gonna go with a round small for this. And I'm going to take in, mm, let's see. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Oh, well, Siri thinks I'm talking to her. But I actually I just did dipped my brush in a little bit of Bunker Hill and also a little bit of cobalt. And for this section, that would naturally be a little bit darker because it would be shadowed. I just want to bring that in there. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit more pure ocean because I've got to get my coverage up here. Um, and then maybe I just want to highlight with a tiny bit of the gulf in there. Kind of give the illusion of that light coming up before we get to where it's all light up here. And by the way, up here I filled my, um, you know, it's been really rainy kind of outside today. So I've had some issues with my mud drying. I would have thought it would have been dried by now. Um, so I can't come up here and, and paint all the way yet because I still have to sand those down. But we'll go ahead and come up to the second drawer. I really want to be able to show you guys the, that last step with the aging because that makes a huge difference. And I just dipped my paint in a little bit of the Bunker Hill Blue but it's so light because I have so many colors mixed into my brush now. That's also given me a few different shades. So I'm going to hit the corners here, keep those a little bit darker. That's also why I'm starting with a clean brush on the bottom so I can get that pure color. But then as I come up, I want it to um, do a lot more blending here. So I'm going to take some of the gold, or pure ocean again and come in on the sides over here. And when I'm going in different directions with my brush, I'm just looking at these different spots to see how they're blending and mixing together. So I'm coming in with some golf now in the very center. This is that lighter section. We want to keep light uh, for the backdrop of the... Um, of the colorful tiles. So now, since I'm getting closer to the top, I'm also gonna come in with a little bit of my sandbar, which mixed in with that gulf gives it just a really beautiful look. So I've got a little bit more of the pure ocean. My colors are too mixed up, more than I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch out to a new brush, and this is an oval medium too, well used. Uh, Ooh, that one's kind of wet. So actually, I'm going to take a little shop towel. My brush was a little too wet. You see why I wiped my paint back? I'm just going to go ahead and get some of that water out of here. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to come back in and kind of fix this section. Got that dark getting in the middle there. And let's come in with a little bit of the golf because I really want to lighten that up. I've got a new brush. And let's come up here a little bit. So this is pure ocean. My brush is still pretty wet. Let's go ahead and get that pure ocean all the way over here. And it's okay that I'm streaking in more color. That's just going to add to the effect as it dries. And this is, again, this part in here is where it's going to be covered with the tile. So let's go ahead and come in here with a little bit of the gulf down here. A little bit of the cobalt. Just get it right in. Bring that up some. And this is all about just how it's looking for you, what you like, you know, how you place your colors on here. Um, you could do two coats of this if you want just added coverage. I've definitely got some pieces where I've done that on. So what I'm doing right now when I'm coming back down here, you see kind of what color is on my brush? When I'm coming, I want to hurry because I know we don't have a whole ton of time. 
But when I'm coming back in here and I'm flicking my brush over here, I'm just giving this some highlights, a little more dimension. I don't know if it's, sometimes these things are lost on camera. Um, it's so hard to see that those subtle, um, those subtle highlights and everything, but um, I always do that. I kind of come into different sections with my brush, whatever, whatever color I've got going on and kind of do some dry brushing across it just to kind of really make it blend and be one cohesive piece. Um, <laughs> thanks, Wanda. Oh, thanks, Lori. All right, so that is how I achieved the paint finish over here. So we're actually going to come over here. I might have actually let this dry more than I wanted to, but that's okay. We're going to come over here and we're going to do some of this aging that I was talking about. Um, actually, let me go ahead and put my brushes up here. So just store your brushes when you're not going to be able to wash them right away. Um, I just put mine in a little Ziploc bag. Um, and then I spray them down with my Mr. Bottle just to keep them nice and wet. Um, and then just seal them up. Uh, I can go back and wash them after the live, but frankly, after the lives on Friday night, I usually don't wash my brushes till morning. I just stick them in the refrigerator, and a lot of times they'll keep for, you know, well, I've left them in there for a week, but don't, don't follow me on that. Um, I'm kind of bad with my brushes. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, Wanda, you're perfect on this blending style. You did great at it. So here we go. Just gonna bring you guys around so you can get an idea. Whoops, I think I'm about to collapse my tripod here. Um, bring it out just a little bit. But we are gonna go in and we are going to, yeah, I just wanna make sure you can see. We're gonna do some aging on here. So to do that, I actually have and I need my baby wipes. Here we go. All right, so. Um, so for this, I'm gonna use a little bit of coffee bean, which is a very deep, dark, rich brown. Just wanted to make sure I have enough time to get through this. So just a tiny bit of coffee bean in the plate here, not much of anything. And then I also have some flamingo. So. Flamingo wouldn't have been my color of choice, but terracotta would have been much better for this, um, or even Florida orange, but I didn't have any, and I really just didn't feel like mixing anything up, um, because as long as you have a, a red, yellow, and a pure blue, you can mix any color you want. Um, oh, Kathy, you'll be perfect. Actually, the first time I blended, I did a three-color blend on a vanity. This vintage duck eggs, stormy seas, and driftwood. And it took me, I had to do a few coats. Um, it definitely is practice, but it, um, it will be gorgeous. But so anyway, so I'm going to use this flamingo. Um, so orange is actually a complementary color of blue. So when you put orange and blue together, you're actually going to get a brown. Like if you would mix those colors, they'll turn brown. So I'm kind of using that to my advantage with the flamingo. Um, and my intention is actually to bring out some of these oranges that are in the um, that are in, in the tiles here. So what I'm doing, oh, I need my Mr. Bottle for this. So I could use a wax or I could use a, um, really I just got impatient, that's what happened earlier why I did it this way, but I do always prefer to paint my age on. Um, so I'm actually, some coffee bean. Yeah, the coffee bean in with the flamingo would would um, do the same thing because it's, you know, because it's that brown. So that would definitely work as well. 
if I was going to actually have tried to mix it, I would have probably put a little bit more red in the flamingo, added a little bit of blue, and I would have come up with kind of that dir dirty orange color. I don't know what else to call it. But So for aging, I'm actually going to start with a wet brush. It's just an art brush here. And I am going to put some coffee bean on it and I'm gonna dab my coffee bean off a little bit. And I'm just gonna start off by running it just around this spot here. So I'm gonna work in very small sections, not like glaze, you know, glaze, you could do a little bit more here and there. Um, but this is paint. And the reason I wanted to do you can actually use your clear coats and tint them a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to leave this clear coat a little bit tacky. So that, and by the way, I'm wiping back with a baby wipe, but I wanted to use this clear coat a little bit tacky because that helps me to do the aging. But unfortunately with the live, I kind of didn't time it right. So, but that's okay because I'm basically painting with this baby wipe and aging it out here. I'm just going to outline all of this down here where you would have those cracks and crevices. And I'm dabbing. I am kind of wiping back. As I'm wiping back, my baby wipes getting dirty and I'm actually wiping that paint on almost like almost like you would do a whitewash a little bit kind of. Um, I'm wiping that dark onto some of the other paint. So I'm kind of painting with the dark on my baby wipe. So the dirtier my baby wipe gets, the better. The better it's gonna be for me. So I'm just trying to make sure I watch the time here. So this is a little more tacky, so this is actually gonna do a little bit more of what I wanted it to do but I'm just getting that dirt right down in there. And same thing, we're gonna go across here with the coffee bean. And it's okay, like if it dries out in some sections, that's actually a good thing because it's gonna give you a nice look. And I'll bring you guys in for a close up um, to see kind of how this turns out. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna wipe it back a little bit, but I want it to be kind of grungy. Really not quite as dirty as I wanted it to be, but like I said, a lot of that has to do with, I was using the flat as a, um, but I let it dry out too much. But it's the same principle, still the same thing. And you could use, if you didn't want to use baby wipes, you could use like a shop towel that you wet down. It's the same principle as glaze. It's just that I am using coffee bean instead. So what I'm doing right now, there's no real coffee bean on my brush. I'm just kind of scrubbing some of that dirt in um, and, and kind of random places. And I'm dabbing some spots because I want this, um, it gives it kind of a different kind of a dirty effect. I'm gonna streak some of that through. But if you do not protect in between these steps, this does not work. Um, because the paint is very porous and this will just sink right into it. So I'll bring you guys in and show you this drawer. Like I said, right now I'm just kind of scrubbing in. Um, and as this dries, it'll look a little bit different as well. I really have no paint on my brush, just the excess of what was left over. So it's a very fine shadowing that's happening. 
I'm just scrubbing it along and the drawer itself is catching is catching where this paint kind of sits and what it what it catches on um, lots of wood grain on here okay so once I did that I'm actually I'm just gonna use the lid I'm gonna kind of try to be quick about this I'll bring you guys in and I'm just going to dab a little tiny bit of this flamingo on here. I'm going to wipe it back a little bit. I want it really light. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go and, and see kind of where I want to streak this in. Very light. I want it very subtle. I just want a hint of it to bring in, you know, those colors that are in the tiles very very light very very little paint and so i guess i am kind of mixing it with coffee bean too because i'm using this brush here and when i put it in those darker blue spots it's really just a nice a nice muddy kind of highlight there and I think that's all I want. I'm not using a lot of the Flamingo. It's just given me an extra little touch of uh, color. So actually we are, I was hoping to get up here so you could kind of see more how that will dull and dirty out, but really this is the same color up here so you can kind of see on that drawer I already did. So now once I go back, this still has a very flat finish. Once I go back and protect it with satin, the paint is so flat, it won't be like glossy or anything, but it'll give it a really nice shine. So let me go ahead and bring you guys in just so you can kind of get a close up and see kind of what that aging process does. Uh, right there, and you can see the flamingo going in. You can see all that dark. You can see over on this other side, please ignore my mess. But <laughs> You can see over on this other side how it's really aged out here well actually let me i'm trying to bring it down to one we just did so you can really see how that's really aging it that coffee bean makes it gives it such a different look but thank you guys oh my gosh yes you just saw my horrible side of my garage that's terrible i was trying to i was trying to keep that out everybody always thinks it's so clean but anyway <laughs> So thank you guys for hanging out. Hopefully this helps someone, one of these steps on here. And um, if you do have any questions, and I'm sure I missed some stuff, but um, I'll go back and check. But if you have any other questions later, feel free to message me on my page. And again, please like and share on Facebook as well. Thank you, Lori. All right, just let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. All right, actually, I can't even see any more of the comments. I've been stuck for a minute here, but um, thanks, Wanda. All right, you guys take care. Have a, yeah, The Joyce said, I do see some comments up here, but Joyce said it looks like patina. I'm really, I, I'm almost positive I'm gonna do a little patina with a little bit of iron and bronze, but hey, Pam, thanks. Um, but now we'll wait and see. Um, I'll have final pictures probably in about a week. Thank you so much, Dixie Bell. Take care, you guys. Have a good night.